Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of True Say with CBJ and I am your host again, Cherno. So welcome back to another episode, man. It's, um, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it. And today's episode is another solo episode. And honestly, like, you know, I'm not really a big fan of these solo episodes because I am so bad at putting on the mic and actually sitting down in my kitchen where I'm sitting right now and talking to myself. I just think it's such a weird thing, you know, it's such an unnatural thing, you know, and I, and I normally talk to myself like I am, I am that kind of person that can sit by myself and talk loudly to myself, you know, for some people that's weird, but you know, for the people who do that, you know, big ups to you, but yeah, sometimes I can sit down and have proper conversation, loud conversation with myself, which is normal to me, but uh, for some, like somehow just to sit down and actually you know, turn on the mic <laughs> and sit in front of my computer and talk to people that I can't see. It's an unnatural thing. So, you know, like all the other solo episodes that I actually did, I kind of had to plan them out. You know, like I had to write all the things that I'm saying so that I can keep my brain, you know, like, um, like I can keep my brain in control because otherwise what happened is I start to get out of control and I start to talk about other things that are not part of, you know, the topic or whatever conversation that I'm having. So that's why I hate doing this all the episodes, you know, it's just easier just to talk to another person, you know, like to, you know, kind of get to know them or ask them certain questions and then you can just kind of exchange conversation, you know, that's the beauty of the podcast anyway. But because first of all, uh, by the way, I'm going to say it's about, um, it's Friday today and it's um, it's like 11 p.m. And uh, I just had a coffee, which was, I think was a bad idea because my heart is beating so fast right now. And uh, yeah, I don't think it was a good idea at all, but um, <laughs> it already happened. So here we go. But yeah, so, you know, um, it's summer also right now and uh, it's a pretty good summer. It's really hot out here in Sweden. And it feels really good. You know, everybody's happy. Everybody's smiling. You know, everybody's outside and which is, which is really nice. You know, Sweden in the summer is pretty beautiful, you know, you know, and people are very beautiful in the summer, you know, and yeah, might as well enjoy it before the winter comes. Then it just becomes like twilight, you know, <laughs> yeah, it becomes like twilight. But um, so as I was saying, like uh, when I started, you know, this podcast, like, you know, when I thought about I was going to do a podcast, like my first idea was I was going to have like 25 episodes that I'm just going to have prepared. And then each week I'll just post one. You know what I mean? Of course, that didn't happen, you know, because um, the way I plan to do my podcast was just kind of a different to a lot of people. Like I've reached out to a lot of people and tell them, you know, this is not going to be an interview. You know, this is going to be me asking you questions that normally nobody will ask you like and for some people of course that's strange you know like you never you know you, you don't know me you just met me and me just you know asking you personal questions about your life and you know expecting that you're just going to answer them and or I don't know get emotional about it or cry on my podcast because that's what I want you know because you know part of my journey of self-discovery you know is you know, it's kind of the reason why I'm doing this podcast, you know, talking to myself, talking to other people so I can get to know about their life and get to know about their journeys and histories to make me understand myself and where I am in my life or, you know, or trying to understand how I am the way I am. You know, I'm very self-aware with everything I do with, you know, and part of my growth is to get to know myself more, you know, and if you know yourself you know, you know, then, you know, you, then you can do anything in this world, you know, because you master your mind, you master yourself, you can master anything out there in the world. And that's, that's kind of the journey I am. And of course, I'm trying to do this podcast also as, as much human possibly as I can, you know, by trying to be myself as much as I can, you know, and trying to be authentic. You know, I don't want to feel like, okay, I have to post an episode every single week, you know, like, for the last month, I think I was very consistent with the podcast I was posting every week. And it was really, you know, it was a really great run. I enjoyed it. Um, kept me really busy, you know. But um, at the same time, I'm getting to know more 
about myself on how I handle certain situations and we you know whether it's interviews, whether it was solo like epi- doing solo episodes and you know trying to get to know myself more, you know, some of my, you know, my um my bad sides, you know, I don't know whether the bad side is the right word for it, but you know, some of my you know some of the parts where I need to develop myself more, you know, some of the things that I'm not good at more, you know, where I, you know, think about certain things before I do it. Like I, like when I'm about to do these episodes, usually I plan too much. Like I think about too much how it's, you know, it's supposed to be perfect, you know, the way I'm supposed to say a certain word or so that people can understand me more. Like I'm trying to create a better content. But also what I realized that it takes so much time to do an effort, then I start to feel like, okay, I'm not really being myself to a lot. You know, I feel like I'm trying to create this idea of Cherno and I don't want to do that. I want to just go out there, press the button, start talking, whether I make a mistake or I say a certain word wrong or whatever it is, you know, like who the hell cares? Like just, just trying to be myself. And actually just, uh, I think one of my podcasts, I was to, the one I did with my, my nephew, Jibril, he was talking about, you know, like the number one podcast in the world, which is Joe Rogan Experience. You know, one of the reasons why it's the best number one podcast in the world is because he is truly himself. Like there's nothing, you know, like he is just himself. Like he's just who he is. That's how he is. And that's one of the, the biggest thing. If you really want to like sell your brand or if you want to be successful at something, whatever it, whatever the kind of business it is, you have to be truly be yourself. You know, I I remember some of his episodes. You'll expect like he would, like he will be interviewing like a, a very important person, for example. You will think he will wear a suit or or whatever. No, he will just wear a t shirt. You know, that has some freaking um, logos and some writings on it, or put a hoodie on it. Like he just doesn't care. He doesn't he doesn't give a f about anything. And that's kind of of course my inspiration of the kind of podcast that I'm trying to have. You know, I'm trying to talk to people and trying to make people open up, you know, but also I'm gonna open up because I'm going to share, you know, certain parts about my life that I never really share with anybody. You know, so yeah, so basically like that's one of the you know, the main thing that I've just kind of been dealing with, you know, just trying to be authentic with myself. And after I've actually did all those solo episodes, I kind of got stuck for a while because I didn't really know where I was going to go. And, but the thing with this podcast, the thing with what I'm trying to do is that I knew in the beginning that, you know what, this is not going to be an easy thing to do. So I'm going to go through some, you know, some, some, I'm going to, there, there will be times where it's going to be bad. There's going to be times where I'm going to get stuck and I don't know what to do, but just, you know, I told myself like, hey, it doesn't matter what it is. Just have like a freaking five year or 10 year plan about on this podcast and how it's going to go. Because in life, you have to think really far ahead. Like if I was going to sit and be like, you know what? I don't, I don't know, man. This is not going to work. I'm just going to quit it. No, it's, 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 you know, then I'm not going to go anywhere with the podcast. You know, and even recently, you know, I've been writing another podcast, actually, another episode. And it's mainly about like addiction, trauma, and and grief, also healing, and all these things. But I think I talked about it on my Instagram story, actually, that I was going to do another episode, but I don't know how long it's going to take. But I got to a point when I was writing, I think I wrote about like 4,000 words, and I got, I think I got stuck. Well, actually, stuck is not the word for it, but more like I stopped because, um, you know, I start to feel like, it was just a lot of emotion. There was a lot of things that I was talking about that I never really, really actually talked about loudly with myself. You know, I, I talked about it with other people, or just mentioned it here and there, but I never really talked about it fully with myself. Like starting from the early, you know, times of my childhood and from the moment I was dropped in boarding school, you know, so maybe I would actually talk about that a little bit. And um, so you guys can actually hear, you know, some part of it also. But um it's just because, you know, with these solo episodes, I'm trying to really get to know more about myself. You know, I'm like I said, I'm trying to get to know who I am. I'm trying to get to know the why I am the way I am. And of course, with that, it all started with, like, for example, one word came to me not long ago, which is trauma. You know, like, I'm 30 years old now. And if I tell you, you won't believe me. Like, I actually really never heard about the word trauma talked about 
until I really moved to Sweden, like three years ago. Like I start hearing my wife talk about it all the time. Trauma, trauma. Oh, you're dealing with trauma. You have trauma. All the people tell me maybe you're going through trauma or things that happen in your life. But I never really understood what it is. Like, was it anxiety or was it depression or what? Like whatever it is, I just never fully get it. And and now it's been coming to back to my mind to try to understand where it all started. You know, why am I the way I am? Why do I, what I plan to do something, I end up not doing it? Is it just because you know, certain things in my past or certain things that happened in my past that make me the way I am today, you know, whether it's my relationship with my parents or relationship with friends or whatever it is. So it's it's a it's a very tricky thing, you know what I mean? And I'm actually going to tell you the story, by the way. Like, so, you know, when I was five, I, like when I was five years old, so I was born in the Gambia. And when I was five, I... You know, my parents took me to boarding school and to, to a Quranic boarding school. And um, so I, I grew up in a very, you know, I grew up in a very good neighborhood. You know, it's a place called Pipeline in Gambia. You know, it's, um, I won't say it's where all the rich kids live, but it's, you know, this was a very good community. You know, a lot of popular kids lived there and most of them went to kind of the same private schools you know which are very known you have marina school and you have ndaus comprehensive school i think i think i went to ndaus when i was like, when i was like three four or something like that but you know so i grew up in that environment where everybody kind of knew each other and the families knew each other but at the same time when i was you know when i was like born i was kind of you know, I, I was always going to go to a different path. So all these kids went to the same school, went to the same education system and all these things. But I, I, my parents had other plans on where I was going to, you know, where I was going to go, you know, and, you know, they both had their reason why they wanted to. And um, one of the things in Gambia, actually, um, you know, the reason most of the time people take you to boarding school is because either your parents are very religious and they want you to have an, a religious, um, a religious background or they just you know you know they just kind of want you to learn about your religion because um you know where i'm from you know you know i come from a muslim country obviously and one of the first things they try to make you learn which is like for example like we have uh we believe that we were created you know by god you know allah so you have to know who allah is you have to know your creator you know before you can kind of you know yourself but uh so yeah like they want you to learn these things they want you to understand these things of course as a child you know when you take into boarding school like you don't you don't know what's happening you know you don't know what you're learning because you don't understand it is an is an arabic language and all these things but you know it comes later like now i understood why i had to go through all the things that i went through you know but like i said they had their reasons why and you know, I, I remember with me, from with my dad, um, you know, because my name is actually Chernong Bubakar Jalo. So in Gambia, like in my culture, usually people name like their kids. Like if you have a newborn child, like um, you can name them after somebody you kind of admired or somebody that was a kind of a like a noble person, you know, like a good person. So you want to name your kid after that person so they can kind of have the same, you know, attributes or the same characteristics of that person, you know. So in, in my case, you know, they named me after like a Gambian Islamic scholar, you know, who was named Chernobyl Bukajala. He was a very well-known scholar in the Gambia. So, you know, so that I can be like him, you know, and learn the Quran and, you know, study the religion and all those things. And, you know, so that was one of the reasons why my father, you know, wanted it. And, uh, and I, and I understood that, you know, and for my mother, even just recently, like last week, me and her, we've been uh, trying to, you know, have these Zoom meetings together because I just feel like we don't really spend a lot of time together. We don't communicate well enough. And, you know, I actually told her in the, in the, in the, in the Zoom call last time, I was like, you know, actually the fact that I became a parent made me now kind of realize it you know start to even feel bad that i didn't really spend a lot of time with you when i could have you know when i had when i when i could have and and it makes me feel sad so so basically like i have this lecture that i watch online and i invite her 
so we can watch it together, so we can have something to do together. Because me and my mom, you know, you know, she's very religious and I try to be as much as I can, you know, even though I memorize the Quran and all these things, but I love to learn about my religion. And so I tried to do this with her so we can connect more, you know, so we can talk and, you know, even discuss certain things that we've never really discussed before. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, so I was just trying to explain to her, like, I understand why God talks about in the Quran, for example, he talks about um, being good to your parents. You know, there's a verse in the Quran that says, Basically, basically. You know, you know, God is talking about that, you know, you should not, you know, worship anybody but him. But after he said that, he immediately said, and, you know, be good to your parents, like be nice to your parents. And that verse now, I understand it more than I ever, like before I, 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 I know what it means, but I never really get it. You know, now I'm living it, you know, and I'm like, wow, like, why would he even put after that of? After everything else that he could tell you to be, pray fast, go to Hajj, and all these things, he said, be good to your parents. So, you know, and I've seen it. I've seen how my, my wife struggles. I've seen how I struggle, you know, having a new child. And imagine our, our moms have like seven, eight kids and have to take care of all of us. I mean, it's a very tough thing to do. And that's why as a child, you have to really give your your parents the respect that they deserve. Like, you shouldn't you know, you shouldn't be talking to your parents in a certain way, you know, so, you know, it's, you know, basically like I had to just kind of talk to her and just tell her like how I feel about those things, you know, but she wanted basically for me to go and learn the Quran because, you know, she, um, you know, she felt like, well, she told me she felt like, you know, she didn't have the opportunity to do that. And she didn't care if I became a scientist or if I became some doctor or whatever, and bring money to her. She didn't care about those things. She wanted me to have a future where I would be successful, but I would be success successful in the hereafter. And I understand that. You know, she didn't want the materialistic of this world. She didn't need me to be a certain type of person so she can, you know, say, oh, my, my, my son is a doctor. My son is an engineer. Like, she didn't care about all those things. She wanted me to spiritually and mentally be, you know, just, you know, be happy with, you know, with be content with the life and be grateful to the fact that I have, you know, and understand that I have a creator that I was created. And, you know, like, so basically, you know, that's kind of what, you know, what was, you know, her, her main reason was, yeah. So, you know, she didn't want me to be some spoiled kid and, you know, she wanted me she wanted me to have a better future. You know, she, you know, both of them, both my parents had a vision of what they wanted me to be. And I feel like my mom had to kind of be the tougher in a way because, um, you know, she, my, my mom is kind of a tough person and, you know, she, you know, she has emotions. She just doesn't really show her emotions that much, but she wanted me to become, you know, a scholar, a leader, you know, within our community. You know, she believed that I would kind of bring honor, you know, to my family and, and have a purpose in life, you know, and, and I'm, and I'm very thankful for that, you know, so going to the boarding school was, you know, was meant to kind of instill some sort of a discipline in me, you know, and make me to be strong and, and which actually did, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm unbreakable, man. <laughs> like, um, I don't, I'm not easily impressed about a lot of things. I'm, I'm not bothered about a lot of things, you know, I'm, yeah, I've, I've, bec I've became a survivor, you know, so, but one thing I can say that in, in the, like life there was, was not easy at all. And that's why I'm talking about this traumatic, you know, experience of it, because um, like, I remember the first time when my father was taking me there and I remember we flew with like Air Senegal for people who who, who remember Air Senegal, this was like a long time ago. And, you know, it was, it was my first time flying. You know, I remember, I remember some glimpses of joy and, and, and happiness, you know, the fact that I was just going to be in a plane, you know, but I had no idea like where I was going to go. You know, I, I, I think if I remember, they told me like, uh, they told me something about boarding school or whatever, but I, I wasn't really sure because, you know, I was, I was pretty young, you know, I was just happy the fact that I was actually just, just going to fly, just going to be, you know, going to be in a plane and, you know, it's, and it was really cool. Like I had a suit, like they put a suit on me. Like 
I still don't remember every single thing, but I can always I remember the glimpses of it, you know, like the suit that I was wearing, you know, you know, that that's kind of feeling like because um, I was really young, you know, at five, you don't really remember, remember a lot of things. And I, I remember when we got to the boarding school, um, like my father and I walked in there and I remember he was having a chat with the, you know, the owner of the boarding school. And, you know, and the funny thing is when I got there, they actually told me that the school was full. So like I didn't have a place in the school, you know, and, you know, like, can you imagine like, like my father was actually had a kind of a relief, I, I think at that moment, like, okay, because he wanted me to go. But at the same time, he was kind of that father that was just like, you know, like, I, I don't want to take my son there. But at the same time, he still wanted me to learn. But he knew it was going to be like, it was a very tough decision, basically. But, you know, because every parent you know, don't want to just leave their child somewhere and just, you know, in the middle of nowhere, you know, people that are very, like, strangers, you know, and, you know, that's kind of a crazy thing, you know, he didn't want to leave his little boy there, you know, and honestly, like, <laughs> you know, the fact that I'm actually even revisiting these memories and, and talking about these things, it's, it's cra like, it's crazy because, like, I can't remember the last time I actually, like, sat down and, and deeply think about these things. Like, um, like from, like, detail to detail, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, like, as I'm talking right now, I, I have tears in my eyes right now. It's, um, like, it's crazy. Like, I, I can just remember seeing my, you know, my five-year-old self just sitting down there, like, having no clue, like, what's about to happen. Like, that was the moment that my life kind of began, like... If you really think about it that's from that moment everything that happened to me till today you know it was you know every moment and everything that happened like that's what i'm talking about this you know the trauma thing you know whether it was um an experience that was a good experience or it was a bad experience like that's what just made me who i am today and that's one of the reasons why i'm kind of doing this <sighs> yeah it's um it's a hard thing to talk about sometimes but you know this is how we grow but anyway so <laughs> so after they told you know told my dad that you know it was full the boarding school was full like you know um and you know you know but then they decide because we came all the way from gambia you know to senegal you know they decided just to let me in because they were like you know you came so far you know, so we're not just going to send you back. You know, we're not just going to tell you that it's full, but we're just letting you know. So, you know, they kind of had to, you know, make room for me, you know. And, you know, so after that, my, you know, my dad told me that, you know, I was going to stay there, you know, but he'll be back next week, you know. And, you know, so they removed my suit and, you know, they gave me, you know, they gave it back to my dad so he can take it because it's a boarding school, you know, like I'm not going to. And this is not the type of boarding school that's like in the Western world where, they dress nice, you know, like with their shirt. And, and this is, you know, we wear shorts and T-shirt and slippers. If you're lucky to even get slippers, <laughs> you know, we call it tankinen. You know, you have no shoes, barefoot all the all the time. And yeah, and it's just, it is what it is, you know. And yeah, so like, you know, he told me that he was going to come next week. And, you know, so I was just... You know, I remember when he left, like I was just lost in that place, you know, you, you know, it was, you know, it was, you know, it was a very, it was a very weird thing, you know, like I, I just, I was never left alone. Like I've never had my parents, like only time I probably, I don't even remember, but the only time I probably recognized somebody leaving was just my dad going to work, you know, like, so this was, of course, a very different thing, you know, so, you know, this is actually funny that I'm talking about these things, man. But anyway, so from the moment my father left, I mean, you know, that's where it kind of all started. You know, it was it was a new world, you know, people that don't even understand my language, you know, because Senegal and Gambia, like we have the same culture. But, you know, you know, because of they speak French and we speak English, you know, it's there's a little bit of differences between us, you know, the way we think and all, and all those things like yeah, there's there's some difference in it even though we speak the same local languages also but because of the french and the english barrier it just makes us a little bit different you know you see a senegalese person you will know you see a gambian person you know you're definitely gonna know and yeah so so i remember like by my uh, i remember my first night there like i i wanted some chicken and yogurt 
for dinner like you know I, I love yogurt like you know the one of those yogurts that are in like you know the kids yogurt that they sell in the supermarkets like the small ones that say like in the plastic cups that you open still my favorite i still eat them till today and i'm not ashamed of it like i'm addicted like even before boarding school like i'm known as the yogurt boy like they would go to if some of you guys who were listening that are from gambia you remember harry supermarket right choice my dad used to like wipe and finish all the yogurt boxes in there just because of Cherna wanted some yogurt. So seriously. But yeah, so like I, I think I asked for some chicken and I wanted some yogurt for dinner. <laughs> and then I remember the the you know, one of the um you know, one of the guys that used to watch us, you know, like um I, I I don't remember how to say the word in English, but you know, he was like, you know, like what the hell is that? Like he, he didn't even he didn't even understand what yogurt was. And that's what I'm talking about with the differences. Like if I would say yogurt to a Gambian person, they'll understand, but because of the French language, he didn't even know what I was saying. The fact I said chicken, he had no idea what I was talking about. So it almost felt like I was in a different country. I was in a different country, but in a completely different world, like even though we're very similar, but still a lot of difference in it. But, you know, and he was he was so confused and he was just like, what are you talking about? You know, and that same night was the first night I had my first rice porridge. And as for the people who know, it's called zombie. <laughs> and I still don't fucking like it. I still hate that shit till today. You put that in my face. I don't want it. I'm not I'm not saying I will right now I'm more humble, but I just don't like the food because it I guess that's a part of a trauma. Like I when I see the food, that's the only thing I can think about. I can only think about that night when I wanted some chicken and I ended up getting some zombie. It had no sugar and had no milk and it tasted disgusting. I still remember the taste till today. You know, and yeah. And you know, from there like my father would come visit me every single wednesday like every wednesday my father no matter what happened and i know how busy he was because you know he was running a very big company a gas company you know when i say gas i'm talking about like the cooking gas you know like the butane gas the lpg you know and we, it was the number one gas company in senegal i mean in gambia so you know you can imagine that he was a very busy busy person and he had other kids like it was all like seven of us you know but no matter what it was, like he was always there, you know. So that's something that was beautiful also. So even though I went to boarding school and I went through all these things, my parents were, were always there for me. You know, and you know, and you know, he was he was always there. Like every Wednesday he would catch a flight and you know, he would he would bring me food, he would bring me snacks and stuff and you know, and you know, so every Wednesday night I'll just be on the roof, you know, just looking down, waiting for him to come. Like um you know, basically like any car that passes by, I was just hoping that it was him because, you know, every Wednesday he was there for like, for like months. I think even probably the whole, like my first year, like every Wednesday, like I'm not saying every month of a, like every single week he was there. Every single Wednesday he was there, you know, of course. And, you know, things don't last, you know, and, you know, just one day he just, you know, he just didn't show up. You know, and I was, I remember standing on the roof, just looking the whole day, like just expecting that he was going to come, but he, he never came. And, you know, then a week passed by, you know, and then a month passed by. And then my friend started just to, to make fun of me and like telling me that he's never going to come. This is over for you. Like you're stuck here now. And, you know, and, you know, two, three months went by and then there was just no sign of him, you know, and. You know, it was just hard, you know, like the, the, you know, the jokes became like way tougher, like and telling me that, you know, this is it. You will never, ever see him again. And, like you know, life is funny because my dad is not here anymore. And, you know, but I believe that I will see him again one day, inshallah, in the afterlife. And but we'll get to that part. <laughs> we'll get to that part because we have a very special relationship and and I'll get to that. But, you know, at that moment, like that broke me, you know, and as, as you like, you can imagine, like, you know, having like I was just feeling like abandonment, you know, and loss and, you know, that feeling and completely confused. Like as a child, you know, I don't know why, like what was going on. It was, you know, what, is it because of me? Like, did I do something? Did I say something? You know, and, you know, I don't know why exactly he just stops coming. 
And, you know, at some point I remember like every time I got beaten, like I'll always tell my dad when he comes, like I'll point out like this guy beat me, like this guy did this to me. And, and I'm sure he used to talk to them about it, like, you know, with the beating, because, you know, it was, it was rough, you know, because it always leaves some marks and, and all those things. But as soon as he, <laughs> but as soon as he leaves every time that same night, I'll get my ass whooped again for talking, you know, for basically snitching on them, telling, telling my dad that this person beat me, you know? So after a while, like I, I, I thought like maybe, you know, they decided him, him coming every week was kind of becoming a distraction for me because I was always looking forward to just telling him everything that happened in the week, you know, and you know, a week is very short. And, you know, so I wasn't really focusing on, on the school a lot because I was just thinking about Wednesday, you know, Wednesday he's coming and he's going to bring me this, he's going to bring me that. And I'm going to tell him this and I'm going to tell him that. So it was, it was all, all of those things. So, you know, I think, that's one of the reason why, because they felt like, you know, it was becoming a distraction, you know? So instead, you know, every couple of months, you know, that he ended up coming to visit. So he will wait a couple of months, then he will come, you know, and I spent like 10 years in the boarding school. So, and every year I used to go home like twice, you know, which is about like five weeks, you know, a year, because in, we have the two Eids, and so the Eid of, which is the Ramadan time, Karite, we, like I would go for two weeks and the Eid al-Adha, which is the pilgrim time, I would go for three weeks. So that's five weeks a year. So I get to see my family five weeks a year. So you, you do the math to see in 10 years, how many times I've actually seen my parents, you know, but you know, at the end of the day, it was, it's life, you know, I'm, I'm all over it. I'm just talking about these things because I've just kind of, you know, been going through back, you know, cause I've reached to a point now in my life where I'm really reflecting a lot, you know, seeing every move move I make. And as I'm even studying to become an actor, I'm trying to learn more about my past so I can use those things and see how I can use them as a, like, as a fuel, you know, to, to use it in my acting or to use it in whatever I'm doing in life, you know, so it inspires me more. So that's why I'm kind of doing all these things, you know, it's not to get good content. It's not that I'm trying to share my life with you, but it's just fun to talk. You know, I enjoy sharing stories. I enjoy telling people certain things, you know, of course I don't say every single thing, but you know, certain things you have to keep for yourself, you know? So yeah, it is what it is. But, um, yeah. So as I said, you know, and you know, I, but I ended up, you know, kind of finding the strength, you know, I, I had to toughen up and, you know, focus on what, you know, what I was there to do. You know, I, I made friends and, you know, in that place kind of became my, my home, you know, the boarding school became my family. I remember even at some point when I finished, um, the Quran, when I memorized, I went back home for a year. And I remember telling my parents, like, I wanted to go back because I miss the boarding school. So it was not some sort of like, I hated it so bad that I, I never really hated it. Like I had, you know, after that moment of, feeling abandonment and all those things, I actually did not sit in a corner and cry all the time. I actually used it as a fuel to to focus and be like, okay, what do I have to do to get out of here? I got to memorize? Is that all I have to do? Okay, I'm going to do it. And thank God, like Alhamdulillah, that I had a very good mind and I did it in three years. But of course, I didn't leave after that. I ended up staying and actually going through the, the schooling system there, which is the Arabic schooling system. And, um, and you know, I'm, and I'm, and I'm thankful for it, you know, thankful 10 years later and then I was out, but you know, and you know, so yeah, that place became family. Like those people became family and I just stopped having expectations on, on a lot of things. Even maybe that's the way I am right now. I don't actually, I stop having expectation on people. I stop having expecting people to do certain things for me. I just, start to see people just the way they are. Like everybody's just the way they are, you know? And, you know, because I don't like to get disappointed all the time. And, you know, I guess that's kind of where the, the, you know, the trauma started, you know, if you really, really think about it. And it's, it's honestly a puzzling thing, you know, till from then to now, it's been just a puzzle game. Like life, it's all about a puzzle. Like everything, you got to just fit everything where it's supposed to be. I don't know what I'm saying, if it even makes sense or not, but whatever. You know, but, you know, I've, the fact that I've spent that 10 years there, it was not only about even the emotional trauma, 
you know. But now that I'm actually thinking about it, if it actually feels like I'm more actually affected by the emotional part of it than the physical part. Now, I know I haven't talked about the physical part of the, the school, but there was a lot of physical trauma. There was a lot of physical abuse and all those things that were happening there. And before I even get into this part, like I don't want to hold on to any hate or grudges towards my parents or the school. You know, it's just important to recognize that despite all these things, you know, that place taught me a lot of valuable things. Like I already said, it made me stronger, tougher, and and I'm grateful for that thing. And when I say physical, I'm not talking about like, you know, the regular beating, you know, most people get in the schools, you know, like the teacher just, you know, tells you, you know, stick your hand out and he'll whack you with a stick, you know, or tell you to do monkey dance, you know, you know, people, you monkey dance, you know, for people who don't know, monkey dance is like a, it's another term for doing squats while, while holding your, your ears, you know, so you get the picture. So I'm talking about getting beating with a, like, with a fan belt and a freaking copper wires that leaves actual wounds all over your back and butt. So yeah, it was some dark shit, you know, it was some, it was some crazy shit, you know, to a point where sometimes I won't even be able to sit down on my ass for weeks, you know, and, and emotionally also I've seen and witnessed child abuses, you know, things that I don't even want to, you know, I don't want to want to get into too much because, you know, certain things that, you know, no child or even a teenager should even ever see or even endure, you know, you know, and, you know, it's pretty weird, man. It's, it's pretty weird that I'm even talking about these experiences, you know, I actually, I actually don't feel anything or even feel like I've been affected or traumatized by, you know, by all those things, because, you know, getting beating and, you know, the physical part of it, for example, it was so normal. Like I could get beaten every single day if I don't memorize a lesson or maybe I had a fight with somebody or I cussed somebody out because, you know, they're, the way they used to raise and nurture us was very different. It's not like a home where they tell you don't cuss. It was like a military camp slash religious. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it toughens you up. You know, there was no don't talk to this person in a certain way. I would at least say the people who were in with us, like people who used to sleep with us all the time, like the elders that used to take care of us, not the ones that used to teach us. The one who used to teach us the Quran, they were like good. Most of them were very good people. They were very great. They, they were raised well. And, you know, they, they don't, like they cared about us. You know what I mean? And, but some of the people who used to live with us, I don't know what, how their childhood was, but, you know, I don't think they really liked us a lot. You know, so, you know, you know, so hitting us and just kicking the shit out of us was kind of a very normal thing. It was so frequent to a point where, like, I even had, like, a high pain tolerance. Like, I remember, actually, one night, like, me and a couple of my friends, uh, even one of my cousins were present also. Um, I think Cora, if you're listening. And we sneaked out and actually went to a video club. You know, a video club is like a place where we... You know, we, we usually watch football and play FIFA, you know. And so, you know, one day we went there, we were just like hanging out and playing and someone came there, I think, and kind of sh- like, you know, he sneaked, you know, he kind of, he snitched on us, you know what I mean? And I remember they called us back. They were like, yeah, they, they found out that you guys went to this place and now they're calling you guys. And I remember we came, I think we, all, we each got like 100 whips. You know, not including the ones that I that didn't even fucking land like properly. Like, and I remember fake crying the whole thing. And once it was done, like I just I just walked off with a smile on my face because I just didn't feel shit. You know, so like I had to adapt to these things. You know, because it was just normal. So I remember even even doing this. You know, while I was even um, thinking about these things, I remember talking to my wife once, and I was like, but I, I never kind of got affected by the beating. Like, it's not like when I, like, I, like when I see somebody hitting a child, like I get really mad. Like, I don't like it, but I don't get like, you know, like there's some people who maybe got hit once in their lifetime and then they, they get like very traumatized. And, and I understand everybody has their own experience, but for me, the beating and the physical part of it never really kind of get to me. I don't think about it a lot. But my wife was kind of telling me like, okay, so maybe it was not even, you know, the physical part of it, but the fact that it felt like it was kind of a forceful thing to learn, for example, like, 
you know, if you don't learn, you're going to get whooped. If you don't do this, you're going to get whooped. So it was nothing like I never had, you know, kind of the choice about any decision that I had to make. Even even to the point where I was fin- finishing, you know, boarding school and um, I kind of never had like everything was just kind of, you know, paved for me. Like you were going to be this, you were going to be that, you were going to be that. And, you know, I never really had any say or any and the decision about what I wanted to be. So I, I think even even now that I think about it, that's some sort of a trauma for me because even now I still don't know what I want to be in this world. Like I don't know what I want to be, what I want to study and all these. That's why I even still hate school in a way. Like I heard, I love learning stuff. I love to read and, and educate myself, but like to go through a school system, like it's hard for me. Like it's, it feels like it's a prison almost. So that's kind of one of a, you know, some sort of a, like a trauma for me also. You know, because, you know, it's it almost feel like I'm back in boarding school over, all over again. You know, even, like I said, to making decisions nowadays, even in life, to figure out what I want to be, it's because I felt like I never had a decision. I, I could never make a decision back in the day, you know, on what I wanted to be. So that kind of still stuck with me. And it feels like a puzzle. It feels like I have to now go in my mind and figure out how to break from that thing, you know, and... So it's a difficult thing, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, that's just life. Like that has just, you know, kind of been my, my, my life journey. Yeah. And yeah, so, you know, life in boarding school continue from there, you know, after all the emotional and the physical beatings <laughs> and all those things, you know, um, you know, I memorized when I was like nine and, you know, from there, I, I stayed there and I lived there for a couple of more years. I was studying Arabic and also I was teaching, you know, I, you know, I think um, like I remember when I was 13, 14, you know, I was already teaching other young kids and you know, I was taking care of other kids, you know, just like how some, you know, someone took care of me also when I was there. So, and by the time I was like 15, 16, I started causing trouble in the boarding school because, of like I start to have phones like my dad gave me a phone and a phone was not allowed at that time in boarding school and I understand why you know if it's just something that just doesn't go together like phones and learning they just don't go together and learning the Quran is is one of the most difficult things in the world and if anything comes you know comes like um if anything gets in the way of that, especially when it comes to social media and phones at that time, like it would have been hard for me, for example, or a lot of kids to even memorize. So things are getting harder nowadays to even put your child in a boarding school. And yeah, so, you know, from there, I, I you know, you know, because it was not allowed in the boarding school. And I remember, I remember actually my sister got me my second phone. And it was actually a Motorola Razor. You remember those phones that used to flip, you know, the flip phone, the, like the Razor one that used to say, hello, Moto. <laughs> you know, I don't know whether you guys remember that, but like that was like one of the first phones that I had. And and I started kind of influencing all the other kids and everybody kind of started having phones. I remember I used to even sell the phones around. Like I would like sell a phone, get some money and then buy another latest one of like I used to love Motorola, you know, like the flat ones and, you know, and just kind of go around and selling and buying and all these things. And, you know, I was kind of bringing a new type of ideology in the boarding school. And because I was changing that, you know, they were just like, you know, you had to go. You know, it was time for me to leave the boarding school. I remember they called my dad. It was like, yeah, Cherno is just, you know, he's just done. And, you know his education is over like uh, you know it was a very you know and i'm happy that it kind of ended in that way like in a very respectful way they didn't like kick me out kick me out because my dad had some sort of a reputation in the boarding school like a lot of programs and a lot of things that happened like my dad was always there and he always kind of gives back you know because like i i wasn't paying to study you know so my dad always felt like he had to help out you know the boarding schools and the cor- you know, these Quranic boarding school, most of them, like, the kids, they don't pay anything, you know. And, you know, and these people put, you know, take their own money and build these schools just to teach the kids Quran, just for, for the afterlife, you know. It's just for the for their future. It's not like some regular English school where you have to pay, like, so much money for your child. And your child probably don't even end up learning or end up somewhere that you don't even want them to be. So that's something also to think about. 
but I don't support the way boarding schools were back in the days. Like nowadays, of course, things have changed. You know, um, you know, even I want to even be part of these kind of things, you know, to make sure that some of these boarding schools are treating the kids right and not abusing the kids and not beating the hell out of the kids. Like, you know, it's something I've been afraid of to even try to to face, to go there. Like a lot of people have been telling me, you need to go and stop these things. And and I've noticed that it got better, you know, but some part of me d- does feel bad that I, 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 I'm I not even trying, but I've been kind of dealing with my own traumas, you know, with my own issues. I don't even want to be there. I don't want to be around those kind of places or even face those people that used to hit me and stuff like, you know, and, and for no reason, like I would, I would literally want to ask them, like, why would you like, imagine a 30 year old slapping or hitting the shit out of a freaking six, seven year old, like for what, no matter what they do, like you can't even imagine. So, Thinking about it now, it's 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 crazy. It's like it's a crazy thing, and you know. But you know, it's it's life, and I'm I'm over that. And I hope that you know those things can change now. You know, we can teach kids the Quran in a more beautiful way, the way it's supposed to be, because the Quran is such a beautiful thing. And uh, and yeah, and you know, after that, you know, of course, going back home. You know, when you finish, when you memorize and you know all these things, there's a lot of expectations of you. And by the way, like, because I went through those things, I didn't even know the Quran that much, even though I memorized. So, you know, there was a lot of expectations on who I was supposed to be. You know, I was supposed to be an imam or to lead a mosque or to go abroad and study, you know, like study more Islam, study more of my religion, you know, become a big scholar in Islam. And, you know, so I ended up spending a lot of time with like, elderly people because when I came home like I didn't have any friends like I wasn't hanging around with anybody that was like you know that was the same age as me I was always hanging around with the big big people like imams scholars teachers you know which now I benefit actually and I and I really regret that I didn't even use that time to actually learn from them because all I was thinking about was I wanted to go play and I wanted to go play football or do something else and I really couldn't do that much because you know everything was kind of focused on that I had to learn and I had to study you know so I never really kind of had a choice you know sometimes and you know and you know like no, nothing was ever asked of what I wanted to kind of be you know I mean if you asked me I would probably say I want to be an imam but I feel like that's the only thing I kind of knew like going to boarding school like you don't know anything about the world like you know even after you know, I went through all those things and coming back home, you know, you know, I like learning English and learning a lot of things like learning even the world, like how like there's a whole other world out there. Like it was, you know, it was it was a lot like it was it was a lot, you know, and and we will talk about all those things in like future episodes. And, you know, because this episode is kind of just like about trauma, you know, and, you know, what trauma it's all about you know both the physical and the emotional part of it you know and though i know the way i talk i didn't feel like i didn't really have you know uh, you know i don't know whether i'm making a point or you guys are understanding what i have been talking about but you know this just kind of happens with me man like when i put the mic on like i said in the beginning and just start talking things can go anywhere and You know, but it feels good to kind of share these things with you guys. And, you know, I, it kind of felt like something kind of relief for me that I talked about these things, you know, because um, when it comes to trauma, like, you know, some of the things that I went through, you know, in boarding school and all those things, you know, all those things follow me now, you know, into my adulthood and, you know, and and is it is until now that I actually start to truly understand the impact of you know all the things that I went through there at the boarding school and all the experiences that shaped me to the man I am today. You know, and I'm still trying to understand it. That's why I'm talking and my speech is everywhere. <laughs> you know, because you know there's there's a lot of pain that I carry also deep. You know, within and. Because after all those things, I experienced like a loss, you know, I lost my brother and then I lost my father, you know, and their absence shook me to the core, man. And, you know, I found myself also dealing with grief, you know, and, 
you know, in an, of course, in an attempt to escape from all those things, you know, I turned to addiction, you know, to a lot of other things. And like I said, we will get to all those episodes because, you know, the main thing I was trying to kind of do was have like uh, trauma, healing and addiction and grief and all those things. But I don't know where it's going because it's really hard to put all together, you know, but the fact I'm talking like this, you know, there's some sort of a, a clarity, you know, and you know, like I said, it's it's a very relieving to, to talk about these things because it helps with, you know, with healing also, you know, like acknowledging my past and sharing my pain and and all these things. It's it's part of the journey, man. It's part of it's part of the journey of of healing, you know. And I want these things to kind of become normal nowadays, especially for where I'm from. Like I want us to create spaces where we can discuss our childhood traumas openly. You know, we need to break that cycle of silence, you know, that plagues many, many of our African families and many of our African cultures. Like, you know, we need to have a culture where we can foster and, you know, foster a culture of kind of healing and growth, you know, you know, where no one will feel alone in, in anything that they, they're going through. Because I know so many people, even in this podcast, like when I want to talk to certain people and I tell them I'm going to ask you personal questions, like they get scared and, you know, and I don't blame them. It's just because the way, you know, we were raised, you know, and I'm not trying to be the first one to break this. I know a lot of people are doing it, but I'm just trying to share my own. And if anybody feels like they want to share, you're welcome, man. You're welcome to come talk to me because, you know, we we have to acknowledge the impact of all our childhood experiences, you know. You know, even if we moved on, like those cars can still affect you, you know, it can still affect us. And if we don't face them and talk about them, you know, even talk about it with, uh, with your loved ones or anybody that you trust to talk to and to understand certain things, you know, to understand certain things about ourselves, because if we don't do that, you will never move on. You will just end up being stuck somewhere in your life like me. And she'll trying to figure out who you, who you are and where you want to go and in your life. So we have to understand what they are. We have to understand how they shaped us and find ways to kind of heal and, and find peace within ourselves. Yeah. So that's kind of it. So I hope you enjoy this episode. And um, thank you so much for tuning in. And... Keep listening. Goodbye.